That's it, man. We're live. David Popovich, what's up, my friend? Well, first of all, it feels good to hear someone uh, not Romanian pronouncing my name correctly. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the announcers did get it right, but uh, a lot of people are like, hey, David Popovich, there you are. Can you take a picture? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Well, it just it, it 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 looks like it. You know, it's too easy. You know, I think the Italians want you to be Italian for sure. You know, but uh, you're not. You're Romanian. So, listen. First off, congratulations, man. Uh, I told you a second ago when we we're off the air. I get such a thrill from watching you swim. I think everybody on my Instagram can tell by now. I'm like a huge fan. So it's like not a secret. You know, but uh, I love watching you swim, man. It's a pleasure. Well, thank you. It's great to hear that from someone like you. Now, listen, there's, there's so much to talk about, and I know we've got about 15 minutes, so I want to try and get as much in as we can. Um, in the lead-up, I did put something on Instagram. I said, I said, remember the name. You know, I put your name up on Instagram, and I, and I know you saw it. I was upset that you saw it because I didn't want you to see it, but it was before the swimming started. I just had a feeling you were going to pop. You've been silent. You've been quiet. I, I know your mind now. I know the way your coach works. I know the way you work. You've You've you buried yourself underground. Was that on purpose? Like staying low key and mm -hmm. far from all the, yeah. Um, the reason I saw your story was simply because, uh, I just wanted to get my mind off things. So I wanted some easy content and like, like I was scrolling through stories and then I saw you. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like we were, we were prepared for it. We, we treated it just like any other meat. And to be honest, we didn't have that much, expectations like we didn't prepare for it uh like we had prepared for rome or for the olympics uh it was just a pleasant surprise that yeah i guess we we're very happy with really you didn't prepare for it like the olympics so w what did the olympics do for you in terms of you know your own feeling of belonging now as one of the world's best swimmers you missed the the podium by a couple of hundreds of second you have this incredible performance what does it do for you beyond that well, I'm just really glad to see and that I got to prove to myself that it didn't really affect me. The fact that I was so close to uh, such a high podium. Um, I guess the Olympics taught me to uh, stay calm during such an important meet. And I think that's something not a lot of, uh, not swimmers, but athletes can accomplish. Like staying calm and being uh, well thought out all throughout um because nerves can get to you pressure can get to you but if you if you just have a balance just enough attention just enough uh um just enough of being introverted then i think you're just uh on the path of doing it great of course you still have to do the training and <laughs> all the hard work but when you're at it when you're right there you're almost you, i mean you and all of your other opponents are there on the same level this is what uh makes the best different like how you manage the stress um how hungry you are for a medal that's an expression i like to use because once you're there <laughs> you're all at the same like i said before level uh the only thing that can differentiate differentiate you is how bad you want it's sort of an animal instinct phase it's mm. like you have to bite into the water right Okay. Well, we'll talk about that in your racing. I will say I did make an announcement that Ian Thorpe was going to be here and he was trying to connect. He, he's having trouble connecting. Um, he, he's a fan of yours. I, I told him in a text message I was going to go live with you and, and I asked him to come on because I see a correlation between, first of all, the talents um, and then the work that you do. Ian Thorpe was an, an incredible worker. People don't fully recognize that because all they, they get lost in the talent. And I think there's a little bit of that with you right now is people may get lost in the fact that, oh, he's so talented. This man works. And just like Ian Thorpe and, and at a very young age, you're having incredible success. You know, Ian, Ian was a world champion, I believe at 15 and then uh, Olympic champion at, at 17. So I wanted him to come on and kind of talk about uh, maybe his experiences. Well, now, now it works. Sorry. At the, the Wi-Fi stopped working. So I'm, I switched that's okay. I can see you again. So, um, in terms of where you're at as as a young man, is it is it difficult for you to be this young and and this successful? You think where where are you putting in 
I mean, how are you doing this, and and who's protecting you? Well, I'm of the I'm of the opinion that uh, it can be um, bad, or it can be mm -hmm. a lot of pressure, and maybe turn me into becoming I don't know something I don't want to become. Only yeah. if only if I let it to. Right. Right. If I know, if I surround myself with only the people I want to. Uh, if I control everything I want to see on the internet and if really I just know for a fact what's extremely important to me, which is literally only swimming, um, then I get to filter out all the information and I don't get lost in, a, in anything. Right. Yeah, I think that's right, about that it. Sense. It's uh, it's really filtering out all the information and learning from the mistakes other have, others have done because I'm not the, not the first young talent. Mm -hmm. no, I don't like calling myself a talent. That's right. I put it like this. I am a little bit talented, but that's not the that's not the big part of it. Yeah. Well, tell me this, man. How did you feel in the lead up to this? You're you're now looking back. You're a double world champion. You've won the 200 freestyle at the world champ. You've won the 100 freestyle, and and this is just an incredible feat for someone at your age at 17. So. In the lead up to this, maybe the few days before the meet, how were you feeling a few days before? To be honest, I wasn't really nervous at all. I mean, I usually am not that nervous, but in the lead up to Rome or Tokyo, um, I guess I was feeling it a little bit more. But uh, I think it was because we didn't simply prepare for it that much and we didn't put much pressure on ourselves. Like my coach said to me before the these world champs that... Uh, Okay, where well, you're gonna have three occasions to swim the 200. Let's get it right. Let's get it straight to the bone, and see what we can improve. And we did that, but at the same time, we also leveled up to a bonus, like winning and doing it and doing so, doing so in a time which uh, completes my objective for this year, at least in the mm -hmm. 200. That doesn't right. mean that we can't get under it, of course, like still get under it, because uh, is that correct? The night is young. That's <laughs> yeah, you're young, yeah. so there's plenty of time. Yeah. yeah, I'm young and the night is young. Yeah, that's true. So tell me this: you you did a masterful job of managing prelim semis to finals in the 200. We can talk about the hundred as well, but let's take let's let's take the 200 for instance. You know, you start off with that 145 low, you go to kind of that 144 lowish, and then you you drop down to the 143 low. So the management is very good. In your mind, what was the strategy behind the management? Well, on the first day, um, it was actually pretty simple. Usually we have it more complicated, but since we didn't uh, expect extremely much, uh, we just said, okay, I got to win my heat. I think that will, because uh, I think I was last heat, uh, and I think that will uh, sort of uh, offer me a way, an easy way onto the semifinal. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I felt great. I can't really say why. Um, I do know for a fact that the atmosphere and the people that are in the stands and when I know people are watching simply makes me be a little bit faster. Um, I, I simply enjoy the fact that uh, I get to inspire people and that really does push me through the water. Mm -hmm. um, like it makes me feel the water better. It makes me push harder, pull harder. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, I think that was it, at least in the, in the heat. Mm -hmm. uh, then in the semifinals, we started getting a little bit more tactical, more down to the point. Um, we we realized that I'd have to go in the first 100 pretty fast mm -hmm. because I'm racing Tom Dean, I'm racing uh, Huang San Wu, and they're both going out very fast. Um, I knew I had to sort of um, be on the same level with them and then, of course, do my specialty coming home very fast. And that was... That was a strategy for the final as well. Um, it was simply be as fast as you can on the first 100 while doing easy speed. Uh, so a fast, easy speed, I would say, under control. Have everyone under control. Know what they're thinking. Know what they're doing. Even the, at the same time, controlling on your myself. Con focusing on myself, sorry. It's uh, sort of an equilibrium, if that's right. a word. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then just... Uh, try and dominate the, dominate the race. Right. That was it. There's a very f uh, famous photo now of you in the, in the call room for the 200 and, and all the boys are kind of at the front in a line and you're sitting behind everybody. Um, what's going through your head when you decide 
first of all, where to sit. And, and, and you're looking at these guys in the back. And what's going through your mind at that point in time? You're, the, you're, the, you're now the favorite, I guess. You're in the, the top lane. You're 17 years old. You've got Olympic champions there. You've got you know, incredible talent around you. So what's happening in, in the call room for you? Uh, at that race, uh, specifically, I wanted to be in the back because I just wanted to see the nerves of everyone. <laughs> I don't know if that's mean or anything. Like I had my nerves, of course, but I knew I knew people were uh, were more scared of me than most of them, and um, I tried controlling my emotions, my nerves, and I managed that very good. And honestly, I just wanted to enjoy that moment of seeing the little bit of fear in their eyes, because even though they don't act like it, I just knew for a fact they might have been a little bit more scared of myself than I was of them. Yeah. Um, and I simply wanted to enjoy that. And um, I knew I was going to win. I was very confident of it because I felt that good in the heats and semifinals. I knew I had a lot more in me. Um, and it was all sort of a confidence move, I guess. And right. yeah, I don't really always sit in the back, but uh, this way I just felt like it. Right. Well, I'm going to keep moving along. The, the race is underway. It goes. Tom Dean's pushing the pace here. You're, you're hanging with him. You know, you turn at the 150. Do you feel, where, where are you feeling like you've got more in your, in your legs? Are you feeling stronger in your arms across, across your mind? What, like what kicks into gear in that last 50 where you're like, okay, here goes David Popovich. It hurt a lot. Like I was feeling very slow. I wasn't even swimming. Like I wasn't feeling the water. I was just swimming on like, um, uh, I was on a manual thing. Like my muscle was doing the coordination. I, I wasn't feeling the water. My legs were burnt out. Um, but I knew for a fact that I was uh, like, because I could see I was a little bit in front and I knew I had probably the last, uh, the best last 50 out of them. And at the same time, being the best 100 freestyler out of that final, uh, I had a lot of confidence in that one. And I just wanted to show off as much as possible and show off my skills, especially in the last 50. But uh, what kicked in in my mind, I suppose, was um, I, while I was swimming, I was simply telling to myself, and again, this was in English. I don't know why. I guess most of my <laughs> thoughts are in English. Um, this was, uh, I was just telling myself like every two strokes, like this is the most important of my life so far. Mm. I, have, I have to do this and I have to prove, not to anyone, but to myself that I can be the best in the world and I can do it in style. So... Uh, again, sort of confidence. I was hyping myself up, up even on the last 50. Wow. I was absolutely dying. My muscles were dying, were dying. But my brain was more alive than ever, and he wanted to win, uh, I think, more than anyone in the pool. Wow. Wow. So you look up and you see this 143.2. Was that surprising you? And the second part to this question is, obviously... Uh, we're, 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 ca we're catching up to this 142, this like this this freakish world record that people talk about that can't be broken, and, and you're right knocking on the doorstep now. So, I mean, to see this time, it must give you hope that oh, this yeah. is possible. Yeah, well, um, about seeing the first time when I uh, touched the wall, about seeing that first time, I set my objectives. Like I had a talk with Adrian. He won. He told me last year. Let's sit down, grab a grab a piece of paper, grab a marker, and let's do some objectives for the next year. Uh, this year, uh, I mean by that. And I wrote some times. Uh, I can't disclose all of them, um, but I wrote some times. And on the two hundred, I got a little I got a little better than what I predicted I would go. Um, and so it wasn't. Uh, I knew I had it in me since when I wrote that, which was, I think, last year. Uh, I knew I could have it in me, but it still felt amazing seeing the time. Like, uh, just seeing a 143 mm. on the, how do you call it? That Scoreboard? Big thing. Yeah, on the, on the board. Um, like, seeing a 143, knowing that no one has peaked under uh, 144 in 10 years, really was something. I mean, yeah. it was more symbolic to me. Mm -hmm. I knew I had it in me, and I knew I was going to go fast. 
but actually seeing it, living in that moment, just euphoria struck my mind. And um, I just loved seeing it because I love innovating and bringing, I don't know, some freshness to the table. Right. Okay. Table of swimming. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk about the 100 now, but before I do, I, the last thing I want to ask you on this is what gets you more excited, the possibility of the 200 world record or the possibility of the 100? Well, with no offense to anyone holding those world records, I do think the 200 world record is a hell of a lot harder. Um, mm -hmm. I think both of them are achievable. Um, and there's not only that I think they're achievable, it's humanly possible. It's been proven. They've done mm -hmm. it. Right. And uh, it's sort of a philosophy of mine and my coach that records are meant to be broken. They're unbeatable only on paper. Uh, they get to have their mark in the, in the history book. Mm -hmm. But records are meant to be broken. That's why they're there. And uh, sports have to evolve. Swimming has to evolve. There's new athletes that have to come and innovate the sport. Um, innovate through new techniques, new times, whatever, training methods. Uh, it's just sort of this strive for uh, perfection. It's Me and my coach never want to actually get to perfection because I think that's foolish. Mm -hmm. We just want to keep moving and striving for perfection every day. We never want to be perfect. That's impossible. But if you continue and try being perfect every day, um, then you'll get to the best version of yourself, which is basically what every athlete, I think, wants. Agreed, man. Agreed. And you've got plenty of time to continue to do that. So exciting. I do want to touch on the 100, okay? So you, you, you swim the prelims. You, you feel great. Caleb swims the prelims, and and right after that, pretty soon, we find out that he pulls out. I wasn't going to ask you about Caleb, but you know what? I changed my mind. So is it disappointing for you? I know he's uh, medically uh, got some issues, which is which is not good. You know, we're all worried about him and concerned for him. But in terms of just competitively, when he does pull out, does that change anything for you in any way? It's... It changes the fact that uh, it was a little bit of shame. I mean, uh, wait, it sounds better in Romanian. I don't want it, I don't want anyone to get it wrong. It was a shame that I did I didn't get to race with him, and right. it was pity. I think I was. Uh, I was. You were I disappointed in a way that you couldn't exactly race Caleb. I, yeah, I my Romanian mind translated uh, directly. I was a little bit disappointed that I get to, I didn't get to race with him. I would have loved to. Mm -hmm. um, I did it before, and I think it's an honor in itself to do that. Regarding his whatever happened to him, because I no one really knows. I hope he's okay, and I send him mm -hmm. all. Um, I send him all the best, mm -hmm. and I'm sure his team and himself know why would they do that? Because they're big guys. <laughs> right. They um, they have their reasons. The reasons for sure, and I hope he will come back even stronger, so that we get to race uh, even together, like. Him, myself, Chalmers, Kolesnikov. Mm -hmm. I want to race with the best people in the world because I think that in is, in itself is uh, is pretty amazing. Exactly. I, I I wouldn't have doubted that in a second. So you do swim the semifinal and you look incredibly comfortable and controlled. And uh, your second fifty is beautiful and fluid. D did you feel good about that semifinal? No, I felt very good. Felt very good. I I knew I was fast. I didn't know I was this fast because my coach actually asked asked me this question uh, after the race. Did you know you were this fast? Did you know you were coming home this uh -huh. strong and and also uh, on the first fifty being this uh, fast? And I said no, not really, and that proved that I still had some in me, but I didn't want to go absolutely all the way out like a hundred ten percent because mm -hmm. I knew I had finals the next day, so that really gave me confidence for the final, but. Um, I guess um, for the final, it was, I guess, a little bit more nerve-wracking than the mm -hmm. 200 final because I knew uh, the, comp the the times will be tighter and will be, it, will, it will be a little bit harder to win. Um, I guess I'm still a little bit more confident in my 200 than in my 100, but we're working every day on that. And uh, it's only a matter of time until... Uh, until... Um, and I, hope right. Cesar Cielo, and I hope Cesar Cielo doesn't mind, but it's only a matter of time until 
someone gets to prove that uh, the hundred free is is evolving. Like he doesn't I'm, mind. He doesn't mind. We want it to I, evolve, man. Uh, if I were him, I mean myself, I want to watch my records get broken. Sure, right. I do want them to last for a second, mm -hmm. but uh, I would love to see someone even better than me uh, beating them. And I think every every world record holder feels that way. Right. Okay. Last thing here. I know that we got to run, and I appreciate your time, man. I really do. I'm I'm picking your brain. It's never uh, you, it's never a mistake. I don't want to put this the wrong way, right? When you win a world title, you're a world champion. You do amazing. But obviously, the night before, you go 47-1. You look smooth. You come back at night and go 47-5. It's a harder swim. So when you're analyzing yourself, where do you see things where you, you probably pressed a little too hard here or you were maybe, I don't know. What, what's the thoughts on this one yourself? Um, to be honest, I don't even know because usually I speak with my coach after every race. But after this one, he just told me, how would you feel? And I went like, tired as hell. <laughs> and that was uh, really it. I mean, we're going to have time to discuss it. We just didn't yet. Um, I think it was all the, the tiredness, just simply progressing. Um, and um, we really will never have any idea if it would have been different if uh, Caleb was there um it's still a world championship final like you said um i guess we'll never know but we will have the chance to test it out again the next time if he's hopefully feeling good and uh, we get the the chance to race again i'd love to see that i did say last question but this is the last question what do you think about the young guys that were on the podium with you a lot of young talent now in this oh, under freestyle tell me about yeah, them that's, that's something i wanted to touch uh not necessarily that were with me on the podium but uh, all these uh, young guys and girls, they're amazing. Mm -hmm. Like Summer McIntosh, Matthew Sates, uh, mm -hmm. Koshubert, you know, I can name all of them. Uh, Huang Sangwu, they're uh, Joshua Liendo. Like mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a great guy. I got to talk to him for a second. Um, it's, it's really something that I like and I really enjoy seeing young people like me or even younger, like Summer, achieving feats like this. And um, I'm super glad I uh, I get to um, I get to see it with my own eyes here, um, and yeah, I I think it's a uh, it's uh, it's proof that anyone at any age can do this. Like uh, on any pole on uh, on on the opposite pole as well. Like uh, we do it. Nicolas Santos does it as well. Mm, Anthony yeah. Irvin has proved it in the past as well. Mm -hmm. There's not really a, a limit to age. Like you can be yeah. too young or too old. You just have to be really, really passionate about swimming. You just have to really, really put in all the sacrifices. And even though it's basic, you have to work extremely hard for it. Yeah. Well, listen, man, uh, congratulate your team for me. Yeah. Leon, Leon Marchand is another guy. Um, congratulate oh, yeah. your team well, for me. Yeah. I can't believe I forgot about him. I told you there's too many guys. <laughs> too, many, too many young. Yeah. He took the double as well. And at 4 a.m. I saw it live. Wow, oh, amazing. Wow. Like it yeah. deserves a, a whole breakdown on, on its own. It's yeah, it, it was I'm, beautiful. I'm trying to track that Frenchman down too. Don't worry about it. But uh listen, um well, how long do I have to wait to watch you race again, man? Uh it's it's very difficult for me to sleep when I when I can't watch you race. How long? Well, we have junior Europeans in Bucharest, uh in my hometown, like uh I don't know, two weeks time or even oh. sooner. Oh, the, those those um, poor kids. Come on, man, those poor kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna have a lot of fun because it's uh, it's in my hometown, and I'm gonna bring all of my friends, all of my acquaintances, mm -hmm. um, and like I don't know if you can see this on um, on the live stream, but like when every Hungarian athlete enters the pool, there's a roar in the crowd, the mm. kind of roar you would hear for Mo Salah in 2012 Olympics in London. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, chilling. Mm. Um, and I just hope we're going to be welcome with the, with the same roar in Romania. So can't wait for that atmosphere because atmosphere really, I don't know, lights up everything. Yeah. And um, then we're going to have senior Europeans in Rome. I love that pool. I think it's my favorite one so far. So can't wait to go back there and uh, swim in the sun. Then we have some world juniors in Peru, in Lima. Um, that will be interesting as well. I heard the pool is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then I think we'll have short course in Melbourne, short, short course in Melbourne. Mm. 
Right. Yeah. Yep. So it's it's pretty packed. If you ask it me. is packed. It is a lot there. Well, that's good. I'm excited. I get to watch you race more and more, and uh, and I love right. it, man. You got a lot of fans now. A lot, a lot of people love the way that you handle yourself, the way that you compete. Obviously, the way that you swim is beautiful. So um, you're, you're winning fans all over the world, man, and, and I'm certainly one of them. Everybody knows that. So uh, keep doing the work that you're doing. We love it. You're, you're incredible for swimming. Great ambassador, man. And your parents, again, have done a fucking phenomenal job with you, by the way. They, they have to. I mean, at the end of the day, they do have to get all the credit. I yeah. mean they're my role models them and my coach adrian they're my role models and mm -hmm. i couldn't have done anything without them and the way they raised me together is uh i really appreciate it yeah well hopefully i can get you uh answering some questions on any question at some point you know i know that uh i know that you have a uh, a profile up there so maybe we, we can get you up there at some point but uh i do i just never had any time <laughs> okay that well, was good. I'll keep pestering you. All right. Hey, listen, man, I appreciate this. This has been awesome. L lots of people watching right now. Lots of questions coming through. Um, thank you very much, my friend. Have a great night, okay? Yeah, thank you, man. Appreciate you. Take See care. ya.